Good day, everyone. Uh, morning for some, afternoon for some. This is Marilyn Turkovich from the Charter for Compassion International. And welcome to the first day of our five-day presentations for uh, World Interfaith Harmony Week. And we are very fortunate today to have Karen Miller with us. Karen is the Vice President and the General Counsel of a major entertainment industry consortium. She's active in the mind, body, and spirit communities for over 10 years and has served as pro bono counsel to Marianne Williamson for the formation of the Peace Alliance and as an advisory board member to the Alliance for a New Humanity, which is chaired by Deepak Chopra. Karen founded our New Evolution, which is referred to as ONE, to connect and empower people in projects that are aligned with global values, to facilitate collaboration for positive social transformation. She suggests that only a radically different framework of how humanity organizes itself will be sustainable, and that we must shift from an isolationist paradigm to a new holistic model. Global values are the heart of Karen's new book, which is called Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World. The book's Facebook page has now a group of over a quarter of a million people. And as one reviewer stated about Karen's approach, a paradigm shift is not about the surface only. It has to happen within the hearts and minds of individuals so that we can have more trust in each other. Karen, welcome to the Charter for Compassion series, and you can take it from here. Thank you so much, Marilyn. It's great to be here, uh, and welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, as uh, Marilyn said, I've written this book called Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World, and I'd just like to share a bit about that with you this morning. Um, you know, uh, we live in such challenging times today, uh, you know, with uh, that and with war and terrorism and um, political turmoil. And you know, during this week of World Interfaith Harmony Week, uh, we also can take a look at uh, conflict that is uh, stemming from religious conflict. And all of these things can serve to separate us and to. Uh, move us into a state, a fearful state, uh, where we try to protect ourselves and, uh, and uh, separate from others. So what I want to talk about is how to shift from that kind of fear mentality to a love-based mentality of reaching out to others and working in collaboration, uh, because I really think that through a, a love paradigm, uh, we can shift from the world that we see today and heal those divisions that uh, divide us and uh, separate us. So uh, what I'll do is kind of walk through each of the 10 global values that I've identified uh, and explain kind of the story of unity consciousness, how we can uh, shift from seeing my religion as, as different from yours and, and focusing on the differences between us and among us and shift to seeing the similarities and the commonalities and how we can approach our global challenges from a more holistic perspective. Um, you know, where global values came from really came from some of my own personal challenges with anxiety and you know, looking at the world through a fear-based lens, um, you know, I I found that uh, you know when I wasn't feeling happy and wasn't feeling connected to others, and I would even try to isolate myself more from others and and protect myself. And I came to realize through my own spiritual practice and um, you know going within and introspection and. Uh, even simple things like yoga, uh, I became more aware that what the, the world around me was really a reflection of my inner state, and that you know living in a in a in a state of fear and trying to be in flight or fight mode at all the time 
uh, really, you know, <laughs> it's not fun to be around. People around me uh, tend to tended to try to isolate me more, or, you know, not invite me to things because I wasn't maybe very fun. But as I shifted my perspective, what happened was I really realized that, uh, you know, I started running and I, I started feeling happier and I started doing more. Uh, I ran a marathon to raise funds for leukemia and serve others that way. I realized that as I started to smile more, people smiled back. It was just a very simple thing. As, as, I, as I started to transform my inner state, my outer world really transformed as well. Um, and as I went through that personal transformation, I started getting involved in many different movements. You know, there's the peace movement, the green movement. Um, you know, there's challenges with climate change, social justice, and race relations. And I started thinking, okay, well, you know, I go to all these different events, and what do they really all have in common? I'd see some of the same people going to these different events. Um, and, you know, I started thinking, well, I really think that there's got to be a common thread that brings together all of these social transformation movements. I was working with Marianne Williamson, as Marilyn said, and the, uh, the formation of the Peace Alliance. I was working with Deepak Chopra, um, all of these things in a pro bono capacity as a lawyer, um, uh, providing some uh, help in that regard. And I started thinking, you know, this is really a values-based movement of social transformation. Uh, I saw it as, as based on unity consciousness, that we're all one body of life and that everything we do impacts everything else. So just as I was saying that I realized that my inner world was reflected and what I see in my outer world, what I see uh, in other people, uh, so too I started seeing that common thread among um, these social transformation groups that um, my values, my personal values can serve to connect me with people in other groups uh, that may seem very different uh, to my own uh, groups, but uh, through a unity perspective, like I said, that we're all one, that we're all one body of life, and that everything we do impacts everything else, uh, more of a holistic uh, approach to life, uh, we can begin to uh, see the similarities rather than the differences among us. So, you know, we begin to see that uh, rather than uh, me versus you or us versus them mentality, that we start to see that we're all on the same team. We're all in the same boat. We're, uh, you know, if I do, uh, rather than seeing it as a, a win-lose situation, if I win, you lose, we start to then seek solutions that are win-win solutions. Uh, because once I started to see that we're all one body of life and that we're all in the same boat together on this big blue marble, then uh, everything that I do uh, to someone else does, in fact, impact me. So why wouldn't I seek a win-win situation? Uh, so... Uh, so that's where these 10 global values came from. And just to, I'll just try to set the stage by um, listing them out and then maybe talk a little bit about each one. So the 10 global values that I selected are not to say that there are other, aren't other great values out there. These 10 values are just values that I selected to tell the story of unity consciousness in a way that's non-sectarian. Uh, to tell the story in non-religious terminology, uh, non-New Agey uh, terminology that may be able to be heard by more people um, rather than, uh, you know, hearing it in Christian terminology or Muslim terminology or, uh, you know, any other uh, New Age terminology. So the 10 values are unity, community, life, freedom, connection, 
sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. So let's just walk through each of these and, and I'll tell you a bit about them. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, we'll have some Q&A so we can talk about each of them individually and how they apply to our current situation. So unity, uh, there's a statement for each of the, of the values and then a chapter on each value in the book. Um, but unity, together we make up one body of life. Our diversity is a celebration of all that is. Together we are whole. So I talk about unity as, as unity is our essential state of being. Um, you know, we're, you've, you may have heard this uh, analogy before, but we're like one tapestry of many threads, of many colors, of many thicknesses and strengths. But that diversity is what makes us beautiful. Um, so taking a unity perspective, we value all the many pieces of the whole. Um, rather than focusing on, you know, my thread in this tapestry, that color is the best, and that strength and thickness is the best, and no, they all in are win interwoven together. So it's more of a systems theory, a holest holistic perspective. Um, and like I said before, um, you know, recognizing that this is our essential state as one body of life, you realize that the longer that we not that we act in ways that are not from a unity perspective that will serve to separate us and and keep us in pain and with the challenges that we face today but solutions to our global challenges can be found by taking this more global holistic approach so I talk about how love and compassion connects us and, and, um, and that this shift starts with each of us individually, uh, that we need to look within and find our personal connection to the whole and then reflect that out into the world. The second value is, is community. Because we are one, Individuals acting in isolation are often ineffective. By joining forces with others, we will realize our full potential. So with uh, the value of community, think about it this way, that you know, unity is our natural essential state. And then we have the choice to live in community. Uh, we were either born into specific communities or we create our community based on our family and our, our church or religious affiliation. Um, we choose to connect with others and cooperate at the individual level, the local, the city, the state, the nation, and the world. So we start to see ourselves in this context with these connections to other people that we have created and that we have chosen. Um, I talk about in this chapter um, aligned with the Charter for Compassion, the golden rule, that the golden rule is, is the path um, for creating successful connections with others in community. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, I, I see that as a, as a core principle uh, for uh, creating communities around the world that are productive and successful in finding global solutions. Uh, I always think about this in, the, in uh, this context that Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Uh, so <laughs> rather than lashing out at people for the injustices that we see that are being done against us, really seeking uh, to treat each other as we would like to be treated. And, you know, it, it, it occurred to me just the other day that one of the things we can do, each of us can do, is to love ourselves first. If we don't have love for ourselves and self-respect, then treating someone like we would be, 
we expect to be treated <laughs> may not be as successful as we want. Uh, we want to treat all people with love and kindness. The next value is life. Life energizes and moves all things. The continu continuity of life is the core of our existence. So here I you know, use the word life to sometimes even refer to uh, what we may call God, but the, the life force and energy that moved out from the Big Bang out into form and into matter, and that energy that connects us all, you know, a, a universal intelligence that runs through each one of us and all plants and animals and every living thing. Um, so I see this as, you know, vibrations traveling and flowing through all of life from one thing to the next. And that we can see when we say that we value life, we begin to take a perspective of life living through us, life living itself through matter. And you can see yourself in that respect as, as, as an instrument of life, um, having life uh, move through you and act through you to evolve itself to a higher state of being. So we can choose to align with life or that energy that is moving through everything and, and evolving, uh, or we can choose to work contrary to that, to, that what, with things that do not support life and the life of others and, uh, and all living things. Um, but I think when we start to remember our connection to all of creation, then we choose to work together with that life force that energizes us all. And that's, uh, you know, if we choose not to, often that leaves us in pain. Um, so it's, it's kind of a self-reinforcing uh, principle that uh, working to support life uh, is beneficial to ourselves and to others. So freedom, uh, freedom is a natural right. Democratic principles are the foundation of social justice. So I think that you know all humans have free will, or at least the illusion of free will, that allows us to make choices and to create the lives that we choose. So freedom is necessary to exercise that free will. Um, it 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 is you can see freedom in our individ on the individual level in our everyday choices you know what am i going to eat for breakfast what you know what am i going to do today and also in the public sphere we have in the public sphere i was talking about these connections with other people and community we have collective agreements and social structures that reflect our values and our choices so uh, through our freedom we create our society uh, through those choices that we make. Um, in this value, uh, I talk about democracy, but democracy upholds freedom and equal rights and opportunity for all so that we can all participate uh, in creating the so society um, together. So, but it's really something that, like I said, it's a choice, so it's up to us to claim it. Connection, all things have a powerful impact on each other, global economies, cultures, environments, political systems, and our minds, bodies, and spirits. So I've talked about this already uh, a bit, but our sense of disconnectedness from others and, and even from our global challenges um, we cause suffering and what I call dis-ease or disease. So if we see ourselves as one body of life, um, our disconnection of, from other parts of, of the body of life uh, can, can cause us pain and suffering. 
um, we may not know how to solve these global challenges, or they may seem like they're on the other side of the world, uh, and uh, we feel that we don't have opportunities or the knowledge or the resources to solve these problems on our own. So, you know, what I suggest is, is to think of ourselves as part of one body. We're one cell in a human body. Uh, you know, we each have a role. So a heart cell has a role within the heart. Uh, you know, a skin cell has a role within the skin. Uh, you know, a fingernail cell has, has a role there. Uh, so to really think about um, our own roles and how we can uh, fulfill that role as in the context of the whole. Uh, it may seem kind of esoteric or, or uh, you know, hard to wrap one's mind around, but thinking that we that change starts within us and that we find our passion, we find our own individual role within the bigger context, uh, I think we have the opportunity to transform ourselves inside so that we see ourselves in this larger context, and then we'll be able to come up with solutions that address our role within that larger context uh, more easily. Um, that's to, in opposition to saying that, you know, I'm only going to focus on what I need to do today, what I need to do for my family, what I need to do for my church, what I need to do uh, in the smaller community but really to zoom out and see a bigger picture of how the things that we do locally or individually impact uh, the whole world and all other people around us. So that kind of leads us to the value of sustainability. Sustainable practices are essential to maintain the flow of life for the individual, the community, and the world. So when we think of sustainability, we often think of you know, the green movement or uh, environmental sustainability. But really, I'm talking about what can you do that would be sustainable decisions uh, for interpersonal relationships with your friends, with your family, with uh, how we vote, uh, you know, how we conduct ourselves in our daily life. So sustainability really is a value of moving from short-term individual gain at the expense of the whole to long-term sustainable practices for all. So it's, it's a moving from, you know, our Darwinian survival of the fittest um, and competition to a mindset of collaboration and collaborative synthesis. Uh, working as one, uh, one unit, one body of life. Creativity. Uh, our purpose in life is to create and express ourselves in our unique and diverse ways that support the lives of others. So I uh, talk about, you know, you are a creator. You are the architect of your world. Uh, your will and your state of mind produce your actions, and through your actions, you create the world that reflects your intentions. So going back to what I was saying about my past with anxiety and fear, fear creates more fear. Uh, you know, by projecting a fear state from inside, that creates a more fearful world around yourself. Uh, love creates more love. When you smile at someone, they often smile back. Uh, so it's a very simple principle, but um, to keep in mind that we are all creators. We create our own lives in the context of everyone else's choices, and together we create our collective reality. So you can think of it as like our, our power to choose is like a laser directing our intention and energy toward specific goals that we set. If we choose out of fear and separation and isolation, we create more fear, separation, and isolation. If we choose out of love and respect and honor each other, we create a world that supports 
loves, respects, and honors all things. And this is the way that our thoughts manifest into form. Okay, uh, empowerment. By empowering others, we empower ourselves because we are all one. We can only realize our true power together. So, you know, fear holds us back from embracing our power. Um, Marianne Williamson said, our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It's our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. I love that quote because it's, it's you know, really applicable to what I'm, I'm doing here. I think, who am I to write this book? Who do you think you are to give advice to humanity? Who am I, you know, when I think about it, I think, but who am I not? Uh, I think each of us needs to go within and overcome our individual fears um, to think that we're unequal to the challenges that the world faces today. Um, we can each, if we each claim our individual power, then we empower others to claim theirs as well. So true empowerment encompasses the whole. Um, it's at the individual level and the society level. Um, and, and, and the whole principle between, uh, of empowerment is to cooperate and not dominate others. Um, we can learn from each other and all things can teach us. Choice. We have the freedom to choose what we create and destroy, how we act and react, what we value, and how we live. So I think I've mentioned choice in just about all of these values so far, but uh, it really gives us the power to have control over our lives. If we, as you begin to see that it's your choice of, of what kind of world you create, uh, obviously in the context of everyone else's choices as well, but we can, by, by looking at our own personal choices rather than the choices of others, we can claim our responsibility for our own lives and, and, um, and have more control over, uh, you know, how our, how, how our own life unfolds. Because really when you think about it, the only thing that you have control over is uh, your own cho choices and, and decisions. Uh, So integrity, everything is integrated, inherently complete, undivided parts of the whole. When we remember our oneness, we act with integrity to the benefit of all. So again, we live by, you know, I'm no lawyer, so I think this way, but we live by social agreements and contracts. And those agreements and contracts with other people and our communities and our society, those reflect our values, those reflect our, our fundamental core beliefs. Uh, so when we're in integrity with ourselves, and that's how the word is often used, we match our actions with our values. When we're in, in integrity with others, when our actions match our agreements with others, when we're being our word and hold, upholding our commitments, then I use integrity also from a holistic perspective. Uh, we are in integrity from a larger perspective when our values reflect the integrated nature and the oneness of all things. Um, when we value the whole and our part in it. So that's really uh, all of the values. I have a final chapter on a call to action and, and uh, the, the action is really just to go within. Uh, I, I think it's kind of funny that the action is non-action. It's to meditate, uh, to practice mindfulness, and shift our worldview um, from a uh, separation and isolationist perspective to one of collaboration and cooperation. And to really, by going within, we can calm our minds um, and set our intentions to join with others and seek win-win uh, solutions in a more holistic perspective. 
So global values are intended to serve as a framework through which we can transform our own individual thinking and there, thereby then transform the world. So it's both an individual path, but um, it collectively it has great power. Thank you, Karen. Um, you know, as you were talking here towards the end, I was reminded of the uh, theologian Harvey Cox, who um, would talk about not to decide is to decide, and that that indecision uh, or our choice not to get involved is really actually a big decision in our lives. So I'm wondering if there are others who have reflections or questions at this point. Um, one of the ways that we will deal with that is that everyone's mic currently is off. And if you would press 1 on your keypad, not on your uh, computer, but on your telephone keypad, then we'll recognize you. So if you have a question or a reflection. If not, I'm wondering, Reed, um, if you have a question. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I'm, I'm thinking a little bit about something that you addressed a little bit, uh, Karen, in your remarks about connection. Uh, you were talking about how we are you know, in concert with each other, uh, able to make changes in our own in our own space that might affect the larger world. When I look at the the world that, as uh, as you were saying at the beginning, is uh, ravaged by war and politics and uh, uh, fights over over uh, religious fundamentalism, I kind of wonder, you know, what anyone can per one person can do to feel as though they can make a difference. Um, any any more comments on on the idea of how we as individuals can make a difference in these really big problems and challenges? Sure. Um, so of course, like we just discussed, uh, I personally think the most beneficial thing that we can do is go within and transform ourselves. But as we're doing that, I also suggest that. You find what really brings you joy. There's so many different sectors of society that are calling for social transformation. You just named so many of them. Re you know, religious conflict, war, terrorism, uh, the environment. Um, you know, there are so many different ways that each of us can get involved. Um, and really, I think by finding what really lights you up and really um, brings you joy. Uh, that's the key to finding the path to the best way to contribute. Of course, there's always um, ways, you know, by by voting and becoming involved in the political system and and making your voice heard. Of course, that's always important uh, and and actually crucial in these challenging times. But at the same time, if you're, say, an artist, um, you know, and that brings you joy, seek that path. Seek ways to express unity consciousness through your art to reach people. If you're a musician and, you, uh, and, and that brings you joy, touch people's hearts through music. Uh, if you are a lawyer, <laughs> for instance, like me, you know, volunteer to do pro bono work uh, for the causes that you are passionate about. Uh, so I, I think that for each of us, it's a very individual path of we each are, we're, are here for, for very different purposes, but to collectively work towards the evolution of consciousness and of society and of life itself. Uh, so by going within, that also helps us identify what is our, each of our individual true callings and how we can participate more actively. So in your life, um, did you find that there was something that, that uh, jumped out at you that you suddenly felt, ah, this is the direction I should go? 
I mean, it's been different at various points in my life. I mean, like I said, at one point, the direction I felt that I should go is run a marathon and support, you know, raise funds for leukemia and, and, and causes that don't yet have a cure. Then, you know, I went to law school and became a lawyer. Then I found that uh, supporting the Peace Alliance from a pro bono capacity was what really brought me joy. So I think for each of us, it varies over time. Uh, but what I find as the core thread throughout all those different projects that I've become actively involved in are these values, that these values uh, help to articulate um, the, the unity consciousness and global perspective that I've been working with throughout my life. And I hope that uh, by articulating these, 10 values, uh, that other people will see those as, as reflective of their own core beliefs and use these values to connect with others uh, on, this, on this path to uh, helping people see that we're all connected, that we're all one. I want to invite anybody who, who uh, is inspired by what we're talking about to press 1 on their keypad and we'll be glad to recognize you. Uh, Karen, your organization, Our New Evolution, um, what does that mean? How are we evolving as a body? Yeah, so I, I see us as evolving from a state of uh, you know, like I, I mentioned, a Darwinian state of survival of the fittest and competition to a more collaborative model that uh, we value the interconnectedness of all things and the, take a more holistic approach. Uh, you know, one, today the, the, the benefit that we have is, in, uh, is our, our ability to choose uh, which direction society evolves. Um, you know, as we were saying, we have uh, all of our choices, even the choice not to take action, impacts society, impacts the whole, impacts ourselves on a personal level. So I see us as now being able to actively participate and choose, consciously choose uh, the way that we evolve as a uh, society and as humanity itself. And our new evolution spells one, so it's bringing in the concept that we're, we're evolving to realize, to remember, R-E-member, that we are all one body of life. So do you feel as though we've come to a, uh, an inflection point where, the, where, where there, there's a possibility here that might not have existed for our ancestors or or have we gotten to the point where we have no choice but we need to evolve we've come to a cliff or both it may be, it may be both it may be both i think the opportunity that we have today is that uh things move at such a faster pace today that we can see the impact of our choices and our decisions so much more quickly Things can change so much more quickly because, uh, for example, the Internet and uh, the connection of individuals uh, you know, all around the world through technology. Um, I think that we have the opportunity, uh, because things are moving so quickly, uh, to uh, have dramatic positive change in a, in a short period of time. It also goes the other way that... <laughs> Our, our inaction or faulty thinking also has dramatic impact in a short period of time. So it's critical that we, uh, you know, choose rightly uh, and apply ourselves uh, with this more holistic approach uh, in these times of, of great change. Karen, this is Marilyn. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking uh, a lot about the 10 values, and one of the things um, that I also was kind of reflecting on was the fact that I remember an anthropological study, and it's been a, a several decades ago, 
but um, a person, I think his name was Cantrell, uh, went out and asked people in the developing world what were the most important values to them. Uh, sustainability was certainly one of them. Uh, the need for family and community was another. But the third one um, that, that really surprised me and then has always made me think uh, of this as a value, and that's continuity. Um, and it, I think continuity is different than sustainability. And I remember some of the responses that people gave when they were asked this question uh, about what the value was. And they said, we really want to know that when we wake up, tomorrow the world is going to be the same, that we have an opportunity to be in our homes, uh, that we're not going to be forced out of our homes, that, that we know that we will have uh, food for the next day. So that, that need of continuity that was expressed decades ago obviously is still with us. And it, it almost seems that that, that is a a personal value that is really being disrupted in so many places uh, in the world. And I guess I was wondering from your, your viewpoint of um, these values that you've presented to us are labeled global values, but are they also personal values? And I'm wondering if you have other personal values that you would throw into this mix. And I guess I'm also wondering if there are others who are listening in on this call who have personal values that they think uh, interface, interface with what you've already presented. Yeah, I'd be happy to say a few words on that. And if, if anyone wants to dial in uh, to um, speak also, that would be great. Um, I think I said at the beginning, and I, I want to emphasize this, that I'm using these 10 specific values to just tell the story of unity consciousness, to tell the story that we're um, all connected and, and one body of life or one tapestry. Um, and there are, there are many other values that are aligned with, with these 10 uh, and unity consciousness. Um, want to speak just to continuity uh, for a minute. Um, I think, you know, I just talked about that we're in, in very challenging times and things are changing quickly. Um, and I think that there is a human desire always to have predictability and to have the essentials of food, water, shelter. Um, those are very important and the continuity with respect to those are, are, are very important. But on the other hand, um, we, I, I urge people not to get stuck in, in old ways and, and continuity in that respect, that we, it's helpful to uh, embrace change, embrace transformation, uh, and embrace uh, just thinking, <laughs> if, if a caterpillar, you know, we hear the analogy of a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly, and if a caterpillar's main value was continuity, uh, it would be very upset with its transformation of growing wings and turning into uh, something very different. So I think there's, there's value in being open to uh, change and positive transformation. Uh, and letting life flow through us and work through us and use us to evolve um, rather than uh, clinging to what we know best uh, and resisting change in that sense. Does anyone have any comments on that or want to participate? We have a quiet group this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I was wondering, yeah, I um, deep thoughts go ahead, Marie. Um, I was, when, I, when I think about the, the idea of, um, of values as being personal um, 
and I respect what it is that you're saying. You're laying out these uh, ten items as discussion. Um, I also think that uh, th that we go about doing that, you know, creating our own our own value system in a way uh, by being open to others. And you know, you could, um, and you do mention this, the idea of um, of in in many of the examples that you gave, uh, using the golden rule as a as a method for connection, um, and yeah. I think about those sort of timeless um, or, or throughout time uh, references to the idea of treating the stranger with respect, of um, of recognizing that uh, that that we are imperfect ourselves, and so we have compassion for people who. Um, fall short of their own ideals, and uh, those kinds of things are, are, are areas that are not maybe explicitly in your uh, 10, but they're things that, uh, to me, uh, represent the way that I frame my world anyway. Yes. I see Louisa Hex has her hand up, and Louisa, your microphone's on now. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, uh-huh. You don't hear anyone. Hello, Louisa. Louisa. We hear you. Oh, there you are. I couldn't hear you. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you for the very nicely rounded value system, and I totally agree with where you're coming from. I I struggle with this in my work, and I'm interested in how you might respond. Um, that's, this is a question I'm going to pose. That's really nice, and it's a really nice thing to say, and yes, I believe in what you're saying. However, how do we take real action, and how do we create real change? So I know that you, you've referenced the work within, which I think is absolutely absolutely necessary. I'm just thinking about how do we engage people who aren't quite at that evolution of consciousness yet. Does that make sense? Yes, I think that there's, there's so many possibilities and there's so many different ways that uh, transformation can happen. Um, I think, you know, you mentioned how to, how to reach people who aren't going within reach people who who may not have even thought about their own values or how those are reflected in the world. I think one of the powerful ways to reach people uh, that way uh, is through the heart, lots of times through music or through the arts or through something that touches them uh, or inspires them or moves them into some sort of action. Uh, that's why lots of uh, these... Uh, you know, campaigns have a music component to them. But I think that there's, there's, for people who have not been exposed to some of these concepts and are really stuck in their ways, uh, really a heart connection of something that is, touches or moves or inspires them to action is, is really uh, powerful. So I think that there are different approaches for different people and different groups. Um, and uh, it, but again, it can always happen through, you know, just one friend. Uh, you know, one friend is meditating and going within and transforming herself, uh, and is talking to another friend, and they say, "Wow, you really seem different. What's going on?" <laughs> I, I, you know, that it alone can can transform people. Um, so, uh, I'd say through the heart and through individual connections is, is, is a really powerful path. You know, I'm wondering, um, just out of curiosity, what are the heart connections that some of us on this call today have? Um, when I opened my email this morning, there were two or three messages from people that were relating to a call that we had last week. Uh, with the people of Flint, Michigan, and the crisis 
that they were facing, not only with their water, but the residue of the water in terms of their health uh, and the future. And these three people really wanted to do something. So that, that became their heart connection uh, to action. And I'm kind of wondering, um, what are some of these heart connections that people have? And Lisa, your mic is on, Lisa Walker. Oh, I'll pass because I had a question uh, for uh, Karen, and you go ahead with this theme for now. Okay, okay. Uh, Summer, your mic is on. And as soon as I said Summer, she left. <laughs> so, um, Lisa, let's go back to you. Well, okay. Um, I didn't want to derail your, your thought, which was great. I, my, I guess if you want one of my heart connections, I can kind of tie it together, is how do we engage youth? And uh, I think the value-based structure that you've set forward is extremely important. And uh, I think it's good because it doesn't necessarily speak to religion, and many times public schools you know, can't go there uh, that easily. So how can we, um, to me this is essential from the get-go that young people start their way of seeing the world and thinking about the world in these ways. So do you have any thoughts about how we might engage youth in particular? Well, with respect to global values, I, I have a friend who's starting to teach global values to, in, in classes to youth. And I think that uh, exactly what you said, that the, these 10 values are intended to be something that can be communicated outside of a rel religious context that can cut through um, cultural and religious boundaries. I think one of the really interesting things I forgot to mention before is that while you know I've brought, been brought up in a Christian household um, and now I practice A Course in Miracles, which is also Christian terminology, um, these values are really resonating with Muslim youth in the Middle East and South Asia. So there are 100,000 young people in Bangladesh who are following global values on Facebook. There's 60,000 in Iraq and uh, you know, 25,000 in, in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Egypt. And so it's really interesting to me that these values the primary age range is, is ages 13 to 24. And so it's really resonating with younger people who are in very challenging times uh, in their countries. Uh, so I, I have great optimism that this is something that will, is, is already resonating with, the, with youth around the world. Uh, and I hope that uh, I can get this message to more youth through uh, either schools or classes or uh, you name it, uh, or even the prison system, uh, juveniles, uh, and, and to help them see another way, another path out of their current situation. So Karen, just for um, further explanation, you mentioned all of these different groups, like from Bangladesh and Pakistan, et cetera. Um, are they coming to your Facebook page? Yes. So those are they're they're uh, just you know have liked the Facebook page and are commenting on uh, global values on on the global values Facebook page. And you can find that by just uh, going to Global Values Movement uh, okay. online on Facebook. I would love for us to, as the Charter for Compassion to get involved uh, with those youth who are, are coming to the Global Values page. And so maybe we can even talk about that offline and, and how that might happen. The other thing is that um, we'd really love to promote uh, in our education newsletter um, the Global Values so that uh, all of our different schools who have ch signed the individual charter for compassionate schools, and we have about 3,500 uh, in that group, would begin wow, to know fantastic. about uh, the global values. 
So I think that we can certainly do something with that. Summer has found her way back. Um, I guess you've gotten knocked off. Summer, so uh, hopefully your mic is on, and uh, I know your hand was raised. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure why I dropped off, but hi, Karen Miller. It's really nice to hear you. Yes. Speak about hello. your book. Hi. And I just wanted to speak to uh, something that's dear to my heart this morning is I actually was late. To your call because there was a global synchronized meditation for Syria going on from 7 a.m. to 7.10. There were people meditating um, with a, a group that are at this time at Syria, like near ISIS, where a lot of the trauma and violence has been happening and there are um, interfaith and religious leaders that are there chanting and praying and there was a call to action for many people around the world so I wanted to say speak to that of what is something that's precious to my heart right now are the millions of people that are caring for that at this moment and so I feel like it's a uh, example of what you're speaking to this morning on the speaker's call and just thankful that, you know, we're all at the right place at the right time and doing what we need to do to get these messages out there and also really bringing it into action. I think uh, Compassion Games is an example of um, how we together can really be a collective community, global community is uh, bringing and sharing our stories of compassion from our local communities to a collective through uh, we have a compassion report map and and that is actually happening in relationship with World Interfaith Harmony Week. So I just wanted to share that, but that's uh, something that is precious to me. And so thank you for opening that question, Marilyn. And yeah, good to be here. Great. And just for people who might not know, uh, the Compassion Games, there's a special uh, section of the games that are being played this week for the week of Interfaith Harmony. And you can go directly to CompassionGames.org uh, and sign up and become a part of what's going on globally. Yeah, Does I, anyone I, I, else have a reflection or a question? I just wanted to, can I just add a, a, a little bit on sure. the compassion too? I just love the fact that that is, you know, I've been talking about the moving from a state of Darwinian competition and survival of the fittest, but I love the compassion game survival of the kindest um, theme and that uh, by being compassionate, we actually all win. I just think that that's a fantastic example of how to bring these concepts into action, you know, people say, what can I do? You know, these types of um, games are, are a great way to, for people to get actively engaged in, in being kind <laughs> and make it fun. So I, 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 I thank you, Summer, for, for bringing that up, and I really think that's fantastic. And, I, and then also I think another great way to get engaged are – you know, these, these um, practices of global meditations, I think, you know, there's, there's many of them going on now, and this one in particular is, is, seems really important and special uh, as well. But um, through Facebook and other social networking, you can find uh, global meditations, uh, and I will start posting more of those on the Our New Evolution site as well to help promote those global meditations uh, but I do think that that's uh, both a great example of going within and connecting with others at the same time. Um, and uh, so fully support that as well. So thanks for bringing that up. Great. Thank you. Karen, uh, maybe if we could switch um, a little. 
and one of the things that you mentioned at the top of your talk, um, and you've been very open about the fact that you suffered from anxiety and depression um, in your early adulthood. Uh, how does your latest work with this uh, Global Values and the Paradigm Shift book uh, reach out to others in the global community uh, who are dealing with similar struggles? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that is so challenging uh, for people who are engaged in, in these social transformation groups is that it can get quite depressing. You know, lots of times people feel like they're just saying the same things over and over and going to these events, but nothing's really changing. And it, it, it can, um, you know, it's easy to fall into uh, a state of, of almost despair about the state of the world. Uh, and these values are to set forth a framework that can help us to move out of that and see how we can actively, you know, even transform our own mood um, by simply reaching out and connecting to others and getting out of our own head, um, getting out of our own uh, you know, our own fear paradigm uh, that is often exacerbated by, uh, you know, the media and the news. Um, I found I find that we look for evidence of our worldview in in everything that we see around us. So, uh, you know, if if we think that the world is on a a, a dire path and trajectory. A to doom, and then watch the news and reinforce that with, uh, you know, more support that the world is in a terrible state. Uh, we can bring ourselves down uh, into a very depressive state. But if if you start the morning with a meditation, a positive message, and set your own framework to see the beauty and the joy and the connection with others. Uh, with that setting uh, your intention at the beginning of the day that way and then acting on that, smiling at people, um, being polite, uh, helping people in, in your daily life, uh, that will manifest and cheer you up. <laughs> That's what I found at least, that the more that I – changed my own perspective and actively choose to be happy and to see the beauty and the joy and the good things in the world, uh, that really transformed my life. So I encourage uh, to, to give that a go uh, for others who are uh, struggling on this path. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Are there others who have a comment or a question? If not, I'm wondering, Reed, I'm going to turn it back over to you uh, to talk about what's happening for the rest of the week with us. Okay, I'm happy to do that. Uh, we have four more calls this week in conjunction with World Interfaith Harmony Week. Uh, World Interfaith Harmony Week is a UN-supported event. I think it began in 2010 and runs uh, February 1 through 7 this year. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern, we meet with the three interfaith amigos. That's uh, Rabbi Ted Falcon, Imam Jamal Rachman, and Reverend Don McKenzie. And you can learn more about that at, uh, at charterforcompassion.org. Later on this week, we'll be talking uh, with Marie Roker-Jones, Louisa Hext, and Elisa Word about uh, how to look at a new way of... Uh, of communicating, uh, setting up safe spaces. On Thursday, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the Muslim Christian understanding with uh, John Esposito, who is a American professor of international affairs and Islamic studies at Georgetown. And on Friday, we're going to talk specifically about the uh, refugee uh, crisis and human migration that's going on uh, in Europe and uh, and how that affects both Europe and America. So I invite you to go to uh, thecharterforcompassion.org 
and uh, look at uh, on the front page. There's a spot there about uh, new registrations and news, and you'll see a link, or just in the uh, calendar of upcoming events. And uh, we think that uh, also, again, you might consider looking at the Compassion Games, which was mentioned earlier. Uh, the Compassion Games are staging a Harmony Week co-opetition. CompassionGames.org for more information on that. Okay. I certainly want to thank Karen for sharing with us um, the ideas behind Global Values and encourage you uh, to take a look at her book. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful uh, volume and you can get it at Amazon. And uh, one of the things that you can do is if you go to Amazon, you could just go uh, Amazon dot smile, or is it Smile Amazon? Which one is it? Smile dot, smile, smile dot Amazon dot com. And then uh, right. that means that that a percentage of your uh, that Amazon will donate a percentage of the sale to uh, the charter if you uh, sign up for us as your oh, uh, beneficiary uh, nonprofit. So, um, yeah, I can just mention a few other ways for people to get involved in in uh, in this global values movement. That, um, so please, I do think that it's on um, shining now. But uh, go to my website, our new evolution.org our new evolution.org and that has the link to the Amazon book and there's also uh, a you can read the first chapter of the book in a preview there on my on my website um, so uh, check out the book go to the website sign up for the newsletter to stay informed and I'd also like to you know if you are doing work that's aligned with these values on your social media posts, uh, use the hashtag global values uh, to spread the word uh, that your work is aligned with these values. And I'm also looking for partnerships uh, in order to help uh, spread the word of, of projects that are, are, are aligned with these values. That's the intention of our new evolution is to promote products and services that reflect uh, these ten values. So I invite you to reach out to me and uh, and see if we can come up with some ways to spread the word further. Well, that's a great way to end this call. And thank you, everyone, uh, for participating today. And Reed, do you want to? turn on all of the mics so that we'll have an opportunity here to say goodbye to one another. Yes, let's just, uh, let's just also note that, that we will be sending out notes and a link to the audio of this call in a couple of days. Uh, the calls are always free, but our operation is, is, while not large, not free, and we would appreciate any financial support. If you're able to pay it forward, go to bit.ly slash cci hyphen donate and uh, help us out. We appreciate that. All the mics are on, and uh, we invite you to uh, wish each other well today. Take care, everyone, and thank you again, Karen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Thank you. thank you, Karen. Thank you, Marilyn and Reed. Love wins. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.